From Newsweek, Texas could vote to secede from the U.S. in 2023 as GOP pushes for referendum. The Texas Republicans are pushing for a referendum to decide whether the state should secede from the U.S. The demand for Texans to be allowed to vote on the issue in 2023 was one of many measures adopted in the Texas GOP's party platform following last week's state convention in Houston. Now, I want to point out this is not the first time someone's called for this, but it seems to be moving forward. Under a section titled State Sovereignty, the platform states, pursuant to Article 1, Section 1 of the Texas Constitution, the federal government has impaired our right to local self-government. Therefore, federally mandated legislation that infringes upon the Tenth Amendment, rights of Texas should be ignored, opposed, refused, and nullified. Texas retains the right to secede from the U.S., and the Texas legislature should be called upon to pass a referendum consistent thereto. Now, let, let me ask you, with all of these libertarian types moving to Texas. Yep. Do you think there's going to be increasing support for Texas secession? Oh, absolutely. The National Libertarian Party just passed a, a platform change in support of secession. Wow. And the, the Florida State Libertarian Party did earlier this year. We're we're all about it because we think that people should be able to live their own lives and just peacefully separate. We emphasis on peaceful, you know, but yeah. uh, well, but, then 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 maybe there's a real possibility for dissolution like the Soviet Union as opposed to the Civil War. That's what I'm hoping for. And and I'm hoping that even if it takes a little bit longer that we could do that. And even if it's not 100 percent. Are you actually hoping for it? Or are you saying instead of violence, you'd rather it be peaceful? Because I'm saying any dissolution of the U.S. is a bad thing. I'm trying to look at it realistically, which is I don't know how we can come together as Americans when we fundamentally have so many major disagreements. Well, it's not shared values that is keeping us together anymore. It's decadence and how comfortable we've gotten, Yeah, how fat and happy they're keeping us, and frankly, pop culture that they're feeding us. And no one wants to go to war because war is awful. Yeah, and, and the people who fought a civil war before were made of much tougher stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So realistically, it's not we're not talking about whether it would be a good or a bad thing. It would never happen. Or maybe I'm just like operating on the, the principle that nothing ever happens. Well, well, yeah, that optimism bias. Uh, well, that's, that's normalcy bias. It it's, it's, it's doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. But, uh, you know, like it's what Ian was saying earlier that these people don't actually want civil war. And I agree. They don't know what civil war is. Right. But when you see these Antifa people going around with guns, and, and shooting people, like the dude in Portland got shot, it doesn't matter if you're tough, it matters if you're dumb. It matters if, you know, uh, Forrest Cooper was on the show last week and he said, the people who are good at violence aren't doing it. And you have to ask Correct. yourself why that is. Because, the, because we know, know how awful it is. Well, you know, the, the people who have trained in war, who know how to do war, are staying away from this stuff because they don't, right, they know how, how bad it is. But the people who are engaging in it don't know, don't care. Right. I'll tell you, once it comes, they'll regret it. But by then it's too late. So I was reading this great post. So let, let me tell you something. Do you know what bourgeois, bourgeois, bourgeoisie means? Bourgeois? The actual definition? No. Yeah. Do you know? Anybody? It just makes me think of hoity-toity wealth, wealthy, rich people. Wrong. It's Ian. middle class, I think. Wrong. Yeah, it's uh -oh. middle class. Yeah. yeah. Is it the proletariat that's... Uh, that's the working, working class. Working. Yes. Then yeah. who's the upper class? What do they call them? I don't know. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. All I know is the, the bourgeois, bougie, it means middle class. So when these, when these people, what these people don't understand is these like Antifa urban liberal types, they're the people who get purged in the communist revolution. Yeah. They're the bad ones. There was this, there's this meme post where they're like a bunch of Trump QAnon rednecks are going to team up with inner city gangs because they have more in common than the laptop class yeah. with each other than the laptop class. And so there's going to be these uppity hipsters who want to eat vegan food wondering, you know, what's going on. And the people who literally have nothing are going to be like, you are the people whose wealth we will redistribute. Yes. And the rich people who have all their money in Panama and Switzerland are going to laugh and be like, care. can't do anything yeah. to me. Well, that's a common part of critical theory in Marxism is that the middle class is what has kept the proletariat from rising up and defeating and trying to trying to overthrow the upper classes because they see the middle class as, oh, that's so attainable. I want to move to that. I want to become that. I bring that up, though, because I think you made a good point, Mary. Th what's holding this country together is basically everybody's fat and happy and doesn't want to risk their Krispy yeah. Kremes and their Marvel movies. You I know? prefer not yeah. to. I right. prefer to not be shot in the street. That sounds like a horrible time. <laughs> well, I mean, like, that's the worst of it. But even your movie theater being shut down. It sucked. Yeah. yeah like, 
entertainment is getting worse our food is poison so if they can't even keep up the appearance that we're comfortable and distracted i understand why some people's minds are going towards civil strife at the very least or civil, civil war, war. Yeah. i i think i i think civil war i'm pretty sure that lockdowns per contributed to a large part of the rioting because people were they didn't have anything else to do oh yeah i think i think you lock someone in a cubicle apartment they, yeah th this is the crazy thing man um i think for for most conservatives who live in suburbs and in rural areas they mm -hmm. don't understand that in new york city you're in a 15 by 15 box yep. and you cannot leave these people were effectively in solitary confinement yeah and then all of a sudden you see people in the streets running around smashing stuff you're there the city went nuts. There's nothing else to do. Well, it's the one time you can go outside. Yeah. That's a scary thing. It's really sad. The question, I suppose, is, you know, Texas talks about seceding a whole lot. Are they actually going to do it? or? Well, we'll see. So I think that this is probably going to get tied up in a legal battle. And, and, yeah. and it's going to end up just like the Supreme Court. And so they're, it's, yeah, it's, they're going to say no. It's going to be secession 2.0. That's the one that you have to watch for is how do they react after they get smacked down and ignored by the powers that be. Well, I think what... Uh, what we should look out for is exactly what happened in the first civil war. Texas says these other states aren't abiding by the law. They've already said that. This, people need to pay attention to this, okay? Look at the chronology of the civil war. The southern states said the north was not abiding by the law because they weren't adhering to the Fugitive Slave Act. Not a fan of that, in my opinion. The Fugitive Slave Act was if the slave escapes, the north has to return them. But the north certainly wasn't doing that. And I'm like, okay, that, that's a good thing. They shouldn't have. But the, state, the south then said, if you aren't abiding by the laws we agreed on, there's no union anyway. So the federal government was not adhering to the law and not enforcing it. So then they said, okay, we, we secede. The Supreme Court can say whatever they want. If Texas is outright saying this election is illegitimate, it's the GOP saying it. Yes. But if Texas, the AG filed a lawsuit, and he did, the state of Texas did, and the Supreme Court refused to hear it, we're getting to the point where you have a state saying you are not abiding by the law. How close are we until Texas just says, we don't care what the federal government thinks. We're not asking for, for permission. Hopefully we're getting close. Uh, okay, but, but... I mean, it's a scary prospect. But let's think China's about... China's going to come in. What if... Uh, is China going to come... With what? Nuclear what if, submarines off the coast of the oh, Gulf. Oh, come on. Yeah, I don't know about... I don't, oh, come on. I, I don't Stage know about that. Stage invasion, drop bombs on Why would Austin they do that? Mm -mm. Why? To, to take control of it? But they then we'll bomb them. That would be terrible. Who, who would yeah. bomb them? Texas? I believe that the federal government would absolutely but bomb it's them. But it's not a federal... It's not a United States state at that point. This is what I'm talking about post-secession. Okay. If the states who break would defend Texas? Texas? No, oh, post-secession. See, I don't think that it'll happen that quickly. I think that what's going to happen mm -hmm. if we have a secession movement that really takes takes hold is that you're going to start to see the federal government become more hands-off. But you're still going to see military bases and alphabet agencies still there, still active. <clears throat> but you're just going to start to see the rest of the influence decline. I think if Texas secedes then you're going to have states in the union who say, we need access to X resource. Now, normally we deal with Texas, but now there's a border and there are new regulations popping up and new negotiations to be had. Tech, China then comes in and says, we're going to give you that resource 10% off. And they go, you got it. Much more likely to go about things that way. With and then within 10 years, economic. they're completely dependent upon China. The Texas industry of oil or whatever they're producing gets gutted and destroyed because China's got more ability to, to go... Like, but think about Texas culture. Like, how likely do you think they are to be like, China, come on over? I well, they, they won't, though, but California will. California's yes. going to be like, it's way cheaper to buy from China. Yes. But but then we'll see probably what we're already seeing right now in Europe, which is that people people tend to freak out when you see another country, a major military power, start to encroach on your border. And I think that the United States, even if Texas completely seceded, would still keep a strong military alliance with Texas. And if China started doing anything uh, particularly sketchy, I think that United States military would lose their minds and, and go to town. I look at all this stuff happening, and I'm just frustrated by how stupid our government is. Yeah. Because the Supreme, it, 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 here's the problem. It's a bunch of cowards. Yeah. They're, they're all cowards. The Republicans are cowards. Most of the Democrats are cowards. Supreme Court's a bunch of cowards. So, uh, uh, Thomas and Alito, probably the only people who have any backbone yep. to them. The only ones were willing to hear that Texas lawsuit. And they didn't issue a ruling on the merits. They just said, original jurisdictions lawsuits are within our purview. We must hear them. That's it. Yep. Uh, the rest of them were like, no, I don't want to be involved in this. Oh, I'm so scared. Not me. Right. They so, don't want to get swatted.
Yeah, yeah. You know, if they just come out and said, we'll hear it, you know, we'll hear it. And then they, they, the Supreme Court could have come out and outright said, we reject it. The states are allowed to and, and, and hold their elections as they see fit. Their vote has nothing to do with your vote. Move on. So the implication there is that they didn't hear it because they were afraid that the country would freak out and people would lose their minds yep. if they gave their honest opinions. Which just means that two years later, the, the sh confidence in the election is shattered. Yep. The American people feel like there are, there's no regis of grievances. The First Amendment is trash. And now here we go. Second Amendment's in the gutter. Fourth Amendment's in the gutter. Fifth Amendment's in the gutter. It, you, you, ever, you, you look at the Constitution right now and you got to wonder what rights are, 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 are being protected at all, if any. You've got major corporations who have taken political speech. Now you've got a fracturing of American culture based on the fact that people could not gather and communicate anymore because no one was willing to address that issue. Or should I say at the very least, one faction was suppressing the other and you had a bunch of people uh, uh, in Silicon Valley. Second Amendment has been infringed upon for the past hundred plus years in every possible way. Yeah. It is clear cut, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. The Third Amendment, mostly, mostly not being infringed. But there was one issue yeah. of uh, the eviction moratorium. Mm, yeah. When the federal government said that you couldn't evict people, there were uh, landlords who said, my tenant is, a, is, is, is active duty. Mm. That means the government is mandating I keep an active yeah, duty service true. member in my home. It violates the Third Amendment. That was fascinating. Mm. Fourth Amendment. Oh, come on. <laughs> is there a Fourth <laughs> Amendment? We got stop and frisk. We got red flag laws already in 19 states. Patriot Act. Patriot Act. Oh, yeah. come on. You've got uh, um, the me metadata spawn, get the NSA. <laughs> Come on. Look at all the X key score, all those things that were unveiled by Edward Snowden. And uh, if, if, there, if any amendment has been crossed out so hard, it's been ripped from the, the paper itself, yeah. it's the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, it's toilet paper. Yeah, Fifth Amendment. Oh, come on, look at the Ahmed Arbery case. There's no, there's, there's no right to a, a trial anymore. There's no innocent until proven guilty. Patriot Act again. Patriot Act again, there you go. And then if you look at the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, Texas is right here. Now, there's a whole bunch of other amendments we can talk about. We can still drink beer, I guess. We need we need what Gwyneth Paltrow calls the conscious uncoupling. We need yes, that from I the like federal that. government. Yeah. Conscious Is that uncoupling. what she said, Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah. When, she, when she split, she was like, it's, it's, it's a Chris conscious. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. one way to do it, I guess. Uh, Luke Rutkowski last week, I think it was, made an interesting um, allusion between the Enabling Act that Hitler signed that stripped the Germans of their, their yeah. rights to the Patriot Act. And I think that might be, actually be a lot more realistic like the reichstag fire reichstag was a burnt um hitler blamed the communists and then immediately seized people's rights the world trade centers came down we immediately blamed the muslims yep. and osama bin laden yep. and then signed the patriot act i think you're right i wish we could talk about hitler and people would listen but that's not they're allowed. listening now they're listening no. well history doesn't repeat it rhymes as the saying goes yeah and so certainly there are people who learn from history in good ways and bad ways yeah you can learn from history in the good way and be like hey that was a thing that happened it was bad and then everyone suffered let's not do that again yeah it's not other people can learn from the past in bad ways where they're like you see what that bad guy did that worked let's try that you got to learn not to rush to make legislation after a tragedy yeah no 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 the the the, the politicians were like we better rush to make legislation right. after this tragedy is our only chance yeah, you look at the exploitation a, of a crisis. They do it every single as time. As a just citizen, don't do it. Don't Correct. support politicians that want to do it. It's it's crazy well, emotional power grab. There's no need to rush legislation. But People, maybe you got to rush in war, but you don't need to rush the legislative. That's process. what career politicians do, though. It's interesting, right? All the the crossover between them and corporate journalists. Because yep. they got to rush to capitalize on a crisis, too. Everybody's like, oh, i got to be the first one there. It's pretty gross. Adam Schiff came out, and he was like, you know, oh. I have evidence that Donald Trump was involved yeah. in January 6th. Uh -huh. And then uh, it was a Dana Bash, I think. She was like, what evidence? Well, let's not get ahead of uh, the hearing here. Oh, please. The dude who held up the envelope and says, I have evidence of collusion. And there was none. It was like QAnon. It was like you're some secret dude reporting from a broom closet across from the White House telling us any day now it's going to happen. Right. This is, I, this I don't, is that Blue on and QAnon, man, they're, they're same. it's the, two ends of the same stick. Yep. But the, the issue, I suppose, is you don't got QAnon people going on MSNBC and CNN or, or even Fox News. True. Maybe, maybe I'm sure there's some person who's gone on Fox News who said something about Q, whatever. It's probably been a while, though. Right. The, the, you look at the prominent um, right-wing voices or moderate or libertarian voices, and they're not Q. You look at the left, they're all Blue Anon. Oh, totally. Like 90% 90, 90 of them are Blue yeah. Anon, not all of them. Do you mind telling me what Blue Anon is or means or so who you, that is? Yeah, you know what QAnon is, right? Yeah. Blue Anon is a reference to the Democrats' versions of insane conspiracies like Donald Trump is a Russian agent. Same coin. Same, same thing. 
right? Okay. But there's so, no person claiming to blue. be <laughs> no. No. Blues, that. Blues, okay. Yeah. Like, there's no cue either. You okay, know I mean? yeah, it's yeah. Just stupid online forums where people believe whatever. But the Blue Anon people are like, any day now, Trump's going to get arrested. And they post memes of Trump in ham- handcuffs, <laughs> like being walked out. And they're like, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. They have been screaming that Donald Trump is going to be arrested for like four years now. And they're crazy conspiracy. They theorists. also believe that the 2020 election was illegitimate. That's right. Isn't yeah. it fascinating how everyone 2020 thinks... 2020 or 2016? Oh, 2016. I'm sorry. Everybody thinks every election is illegitimate. It kind of... It almost makes me feel like maybe voting isn't always the best way to solve our problems. Michael Malice had a bold tweet today. He was like, there's there's no upside to a, a, accepting an election you disagree with. Well... And I'm like, he's right. I mean, right. in a sense. But I kind of feel like accepting you lose an election is because you have a stable system of governance and, and a culture in which you agree with people. Right. I suppose if we've, we've come to the point in the U.S. where we have no unifying culture other than, other than gluttony, then... Dependence. Well, we've got roads and currency and education styles and communication. Tele- like, I can drive to my parents' house in Ohio. I can, you know, we have a lot of things binding us as a culture. Oh. But we have, we have, our culture is fracturing is the issue. Yeah. The so internet has really done that. Education. Has- let me... Let, let, let me ask you guys, right? Uh, let's say civil war happens. The food supply collapses because, you know, Russia and Ukraine war. Small town of 10,000 people. What do you think the people in that town do when they run out of food? Anybody? Well, it depends on the town, I guess. Is it like out in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, they're growing nowhere. their own food? It's the middle of nowhere, small oh, they're town. Oh, they're going to have to go to the next town. And do what? Look for food. So do you think the people in that small town will work together? To go look for food? Some of them will. Do you think the town would start rioting amongst its, uh, within itself and destroying itself as people steal food from their neighbors? Possibly. I don't think so. I think a small town of 10,000 people in the middle of nowhere where you're going to have people come out and be like, what do we do? Well, I don't know. We have no food. You're going to have a town hall meeting. There might be some theft. The police and people will round up. We can't allow this. We got to figure this one out. The what changes it is the internet because you'll have like sleeper cells on Facebook groups where they're like, you go and infiltrate your neighbor's meeting and then we'll have an agent there well, on Thursday. No, listen, and all these different groups will come together. A small town where people are more likely to know each other. They're more likely to be conservative. They're more likely to go to church together. They're not going to break the window of their neighbor's house to steal his bread. I think New York City, on the other hand, their na- neighbors don't know each other at all. I lived below, above, and across from people I never met. Yeah. I don't know their names. I barely knew what they looked like. That's New York City. Out here, we, we, we know who the neighbors are. We only talk to them all that often. Yeah. But when, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're more likely to know who your neighbors are. I think realistically in a small town setting, you're likely to see a handful of people try to loot and riot and act crazy. And unfortunately, you'll see some other people in the town Put them down yeah because I think they don't they would, but, right they I, won't put up with it yeah i think they would end that pretty quickly and i wanted to say too i think this was making me think that maybe part of the reason that one in five people in the soviet union were informants by the end was because they were living in such close quarters because i was going to say i was going to argue with tim and be like oh no you know remember one in five people you know people and families were t- selling each other out but i was like Maybe that's because they were cramped in like what was functionally a gulag. Well, and they apartment. were desperate. Yeah, I mean, desperate to try to right. well not get thrown in the gulag, right? Exactly. But also to garner goodwill with your superiors who have their thumb could, on you. Yeah. I think smaller towns, you're going to see a lot less riding. Yes, and absolutely. you do see a lot less riding in general, for you know, for any reason. In New York, where the guy who lives ten feet from the other guy doesn't know who the other guy is, oh, they're going to rob you blind. It's yeah. like I'm hungry. You got beans. Those beans are mine. Yeah, it's like. I think it's called the the concept of anomie, you know, being anonymous in a giant crowd because you, right. you just can. You can just blend right in like a fish. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.